welcome back to my channel. So I want to talk about the Love After Lockup where they now episode that was on tonight. And it was talking about Britney and Santiba. So first, let's start off with Britney. So Britney is still living in Florida. And she said that she's currently living the single life. So two and a half months prior to filming this update episode, Brittany and Marcelino split up after Brittany found out that Marcelino had cheated on her again after they had renewed their vows and Brittany thought that cheating was a thing in the past. So Brittany said the big wake up call for her was when she realized that she deserved better and she was not setting a good example for her kids by tolerating this behavior over and over again. So Brittany first asked Marcelino to leave the house and that she was done and she said Marcelino was like, yo, this is my house too, I refuse to leave. So she's like, okay, you can stay at the house, you can have the house, and I'm going to go ahead and move out. So she said she does not live far from Mar Marcelino at all, and they still have a really good co-parenting relationship. And despite where her and Marcelino stand, she said he's still a really great father. She won't take that away from him. So even though they're split up, they are still married, and neither one of them have talked about divorce yet. Brittany said that she still has his name tatted on her. But, you know, at the time of filming, it was only two and a half months. So, you know, she's still trying to pick up the pieces. So despite all the drama and Brittany and Marcelino splitting up, Brittany says that she has zero regrets when it comes to the whole situation with Amanda. So it sounds like Brittany has been reading social media comments because she was defending herself. She's like, yeah, I saw people were saying, you know, it's your fault because, you know, you opened up the door. And, you know, that's what I said after the whole incident happened when he, she found out Amanda was talking to Marcelino behind her back. I said, yeah, she opened up Pandora's box. But Brittany's like, well, it's not my fault because they should be able to hold themselves accountable. But honestly, with how much Marcelino was cheating and how many times she was catching him talking to other women, even if they didn't do that whole thing with Amanda in the bedroom, I still feel like he would have cheated regardless. So I don't even think that's worthy of blaming the whole marriage because the man was still doing other stuff on top of that. So Brittany flew to Vegas and she said that she was actually going to meet up with Amanda. And she said that Amanda got super paranoid and she was like, okay, well you can meet me at this casino. And she wanted to meet her like right in the middle of the casino floor where it's really busy and there's security. And then Brittany said Amanda started getting really paranoid. She's like, are you filming? Do you have anyone with you? And she kept asking the same questions over and over again. And then Brittany said she, I guess she ended up not going for some reason. But then she said that she ended up apologizing to Amanda after that but since that happened they have not talked to each other at all I mean I don't blame Amanda for being super paranoid after Brittany showed up to her job last season and dragged her ass right in front of her job and now I wonder after Brittany ended up leaving Marcelino if he still talking to Amanda in the background then they shared an update at the end of the episode and they said that they tried to get Marcelino to be a part of the episode and he refused to talk to them or even film with them. So it sounds like Marcelino is done with WeTV for good. So Brittany was asked if she's seeing anyone. She said she's currently single and she said dating and finding somebody is the last thing that's been on her mind after everything she's gone through the past few months. But she said if she was to start dating someone again it would most likely be a female she said that's what she's had on her mind and she said she has a hard time getting with females usually and dating them because she likes to be the dominant one but she also likes to be submissive and she says she does not like to be submissive to a female and she feels weird about it but she was posting with another girl not that long ago so I wonder if maybe this is the girl she was talking about when she was hinting that the next person she dates is gonna be a girl I just hope that Brittany doesn't rush into another relationship and get pregnant really fast like she's done in the past. I don't know if she ended up getting her tubes tied or she can still have more babies or she'd be open to more babies in the future. 
She was also asked about her relationship with her mother, and she said it's a work in progress. She said that her mom is a binger, so she feels like she doesn't have an issue because she'll go months and everything will be great. When it's good, it's really good. But then all of a sudden, she'll go out on a binge and she'll go really hard, and then all of a sudden, like, she'll have all these big problems hit rock bottom, and then she gets sober again, and she's the number one mom, and then it just it's a cycle going back and forth and just never ends. So Brittany said that right now she's allowing her mother to be around her children as long as her mother continues to be sober. And I saw some Facebook photos of her mom about six months ago and she looked a lot better compared to how she looked on the show. So Brittany has been a busy girl since she's been on the show. She says she has published her second book just a few months ago. And she said it's awesome because she had so many people willing to pre-order her book and purchase her book. And she said it wasn't just like, you know, kind of good. She said it was really, really good the amount of sales she had on her second book. And I know she did hella good on her first book because she had hella reviews on Amazon. And those are all verified purchases. So Brittany said she's still practicing real estate in Nevada. And she's going to get her license in Florida soon to practice real estate. But I don't even know if she's going to focus on that because she also has a cleaning business she started. She said it's super lucrative for her. So at the end of the episode, Brittany got super emotional because she felt like it was a farewell to everyone since she doesn't have any more seasons to look forward to with Marcelino. I don't think it's a goodbye. I think it's more like a see you later. Honestly, I wouldn't be shocked if Love After Lock of eventually starts some kind of single life spinoff in the future. And I wouldn't be surprised if they bring her back for another segment for Where Are They Now because they do these updates every single year. Like, look at Jonna and Garrett, for example. They've been doing these updates for at least three or four years now. And they have been on the updates every single season, back to back each year. So I feel like Brittany's going to be a reoccurring character for future updates. And I wouldn't be surprised if they bring her back to host another special like they did with the New Year's Eve special. But I don't think they're going to be done with Brittany. Just cut her off for good. They're going to want to keep checking in with her and get the tea when she does finally move on. So then they also checked in with Santiba for the other half of the episode. And Santiba says since filming the show, she has not talked to Talzi at all. She said he's back in prison after he ended up burning his fiance's house down. And I covered that whole thing. I got them on my channel. But that was just a big mess. So Santiba says that she started having the hots for another cast member on the show and that is Lacey's husband John so she says that this was back when John was single and she slid his DMs and he actually hit her back and they start FaceTiming and they're talking on the phone and even John was wanting her to come down and visit him in Virginia but that never happened and she said that they're just friends but Santiba said that she decided to date another inmate named Blake after she was done with Talsy. so she was saying oh yes I learned my lesson. I know when to look for red flags. And then the, a minute later, she says she's dating another inmate. Here's the thing, though. Santiva says they get along really well, but she doesn't know if they'll actually be in a relationship when he gets out or be serious. So pretty much, she has just helped him pass time in prison. And she's even saying, oh, yeah, so he doesn't get out till 2026, but he just got approved for me to come visit him. And he's locked up in Illinois, so she says she plans to make a trip and fly down to Illinois. But, I mean, what's, I just don't get it. If it was me, I would not be flying out to a whole other state to see a dude when you said you're not even sure if it's going to be anything serious between you two when you get out. And so I'm confused when this was filmed though because Santiba is talking about herself dating this inmate in this show. And, but she has a new boyfriend she's dating now and this is not the same guy. So these pictures I've been showing you on this video, this is not the inmate she's talking about. They're her current boyfriend. So she's been posting this dude for the past few months. And on August 16th, she posted this. She's like, look, I'm not usually the one to share personal info, but I'm trying to help anybody who may be struggling with their demons. She says, as most of you know, 
Corey and I had to split up a little over a month ago. The reason for this was because he is a he's on drugs, and I promised myself that after my divorce to someone who used, who is sober now, I would never go down that road again. Corey realized he needed help and went into a facility to start his journey to sobriety for himself and his health. He's now been completely sober from drugs slash alcohol for 40 days and is now a full-time security office and has an amazing girlfriend, aka me. I'm so very proud of him and so are his family and friends. It's important for people who use to realize there are resources out there, people who support you out there. I know it's easier said than done, my str like my struggle with weight. So she has been posting him recently, so it looks like they're still going strong. Hopefully he's still sober. And Santee Marie really didn't say much else. She said that she ended up getting fillers before she came on the show, and she said she regrets that so much. She said she hated the way they looked on her, and she hated Hated watching herself back because that's all she could look at the whole time which I never noticed that on her during her season when they were going back to old clips when she was talking about it I could kind of notice now but you know some nothing wrong with lip filler you know do you boo boo whatever makes you feel better about yourself but the people who overdo it like Darcy and Stacy I can understand where Santeeb is coming from because, like, people like Darcy and Stacy, when they talk, that's all I can look at. It's so distracting. I didn't see that to be an issue with Santeeb when she had it. But Santeeb really didn't get much other update. She said that she's gained a little bit of weight since her season, but I thought she looked fine. I thought she actually looked a little smaller since her season. But that's it for this video, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Check out my lashes and cosmetics at accordingtoamber.com. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and thank you so much for watching.